good afternoon i hope you are all safe and taking necessary precautions in this trying times for all of us but show needs to go on i wish to discuss today the concept of dynamic stability differential equations and phase diagram i have this equation for you that is y1 dot that is the differential of y1 with respect to time which is equal to 2y2 minus 6 and y2 dot is equal to 8y1 minus 16 so uh, you very well know that the a matrix associated with this is 0 2 8 and 0 so one can always find the characteristic roots which works out to be 4 and minus 4 now we have heard we have learned uh, in our earlier classes that if the characteristic roots are real and distinct there are three possibilities if all the roots are positive then you would see a solution wherein uh, the solution will diverge from the long run equilibrium if both the roots turn out to be mm -hmm. negative then you will see that the uh, all the 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 uh, the solution uh, turns out to be uh, uh, towards the equilibrium and if the third possibility is that if uh, one of the roots is positive and the other is negative then you would have a solution which is called the saddle path so we'll uh, talk about saddle path and we'll try to understand the dynamic stability uh, using the phase diagram now uh, the complete solution is For real and distinct root works out to be y1 is equal to c1 e r1 t plus c2 e r2 t and y2 to be equal to r1 minus a1 1 a1 2 c1 e r1 t plus r2 minus a1 1 a1 2 c2 e2 raised to power r2 t. So if one translates this uh, into the solution, then it works out to be. i'm going to write the solution and then i will draw the phase diagram associated with this so the solution works out to be and for y2 so this is the homogeneous solution now if you recall uh, to get the particular solution we had this equation to y2 uh, we had 2y2 a was 2y2 Minus six and y two dot was eight y one minus sixteen. So the particular solution works out to be. For y two, it works out to be n for y one. Uh, 
this we get after doing y1 dot equating y1 dot to, to, be, to, to be 0, y2 dot to be equal to 0. So then you can write the complete solution to be y1 to be equal to particular solution to be 2 and this b3. So this is a complete solution for this differential equation. Now I am going to draw the phase diagram to understand the dynamic stability and to understand the saddle path which is the unique path which will take you to the equilibrium solution. The equilibrium is 2 and 3. So we will see how uh, you would get to the equilibrium. So I am going to rub this and draw for you the phase diagram Now, uh, you can see that the particular solution is y1 is equal to 2 and y2 is equal to 3. Now, please understand that the concept of dynamic stability is that if you are out of this equilibrium position, would then, would then the equilibrium forces will push you to this equilibrium point. So try to understand that in a rainy season, say uh, you have lots of rains and there are, there are roads which are full of water and you drop the leaf or you drop a feather, will that feather reach a equilibrium point? Will, will it reach a desired point? So to understand that uh, we, we have the phase diagram wherein we draw the isoc lines. So y1 dot is equal to 0 will give you that y2 is equal to 3 and the y2 dot is equal to 0 will give you y1 is equal to 2. Now we need to see whether if we are out of this equilibrium will the equilibrium forces will bring us to this equilibrium point. Now for that you need to understand that what happens if y2 is greater than 3. So if y2 is greater than 3, then y1 dot, say y2 dot, y2 is greater than 3. If y2 is greater than 3, then y1 dot is greater than Zero. So, if you have y2 greater than 3, then y1 dot is greater than 0, meaning that if you are here, you would have 
the arrows pointing towards the right side. If y2 is less than 3, then y1 dot is less than 0. So here the rook arrows will be in the opposite direction. Now look at the second equation. If you look at the second equation and check what happens if y1 is say greater than 2. If y1 is greater than 2, then y2 dot would be greater than 0. So then it means that the arrows will point upwards if y1 is greater than 0. You can also check if y1 is less than 0, then y2 dot will be less than 0. So in that case, your arrows will, will show, uh, in, uh, will be in the downward direction. Now if you wish to understand the saddle path, this is the saddle path which meaning that if you are somewhere here in this path, then the equilibrium forces will take you to this point. If you are somewhere out, then uh, looking at these arrows, you will see that the arrows point towards this. Here, if you are somewhere outside, it's pointing towards the other direction. If you are here, then it will go here. If you are here, then you will go to the opposite direction. So only when you are at this path, you will reach to the equilibrium. This is the famous saddle path. Now, uh, if you wish to know how, uh, what happens if you are on the saddle path, then you need to work out the characteristic vector associated with A matrix, which worked out to be 1 and 2 and 1 and minus 2 associated with the lambda 4 and minus 4. So this is the characteristic vector. So if you plot this, say 1, 2, 1 and 2, so it will be some point here, then uh, if you draw a line and because you, your characteristic root is positive, you will move away from the equilibrium. While if the lambda works out to be minus 4 and the characteristic vector is 1 and minus 2, you are somewhere here and because the lambda is negative, your the direction is towards the equilibrium and you are on the saddle path. So this characteristic vector helps you to get this, this path. This path will lead you either away from the equilibrium or towards the equilibrium. Or you can be anywhere else also and we have seen that if you are anywhere else, the arrows show that you will be moving away from the equilibrium. It's only this path which will take you to the, to the equilibrium point. 
So we will see its application when we will study how in an economy money supply affects the exchange rate uh, in the light of uh, the, the prices being little sticky. So next time when I come I will be speaking on the Don Bush model of exchange rate overshooting. Thank you so much and see you.